How about that for a quality roach? That's not the biggest one today, but they're all beautiful stamp. Absolutely scale perfect. Morning guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. This morning is Sunday the 15th of September and it's nippy, but it's not as cold as it has been the last two days. It's 10 degrees this morning, yesterday was 5 and 6 the other morning. We've had a bit of rain, but it's supposed to be dry today up until about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, but I'll be, I will be all gone by then. Today, as I say, I'm down at Coltshall on the common or the green. Uh, it's all free fishing along here. I popped down yesterday just to give it a recce. I was going to sort of um, try and rake a swim out, but there's too many boats in. There's quite a few people fishing. And I finally met Bretsky, the old Brett from the fishing channel. So it was good to meet you, mate. Yeah, he was, he was just out doing a bit of fishing. He wasn't filming, but uh, he had a bit of a blank yesterday. And nothing new there. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. Um, I had to get that one in. Yeah, so today I'm just basically pole fishing. That's all I'm going to do. No, I was going to set up a feeder rod, but it's good to pole fish. I've got three rigs set up, and I'll run you through them now. I'm fishing eight meters on two of them, and then I've got a four meter or top three plus one for roach down on the edge. The rig I'm starting with, I've had about ten roach. It's what's the time? It's about half seven. I've got down here nice and early, set up. Had a few runs through and I found a clear spot. It's quite patchy. Um, the problem is down here without raking it, they cut the reeds, but they only cut sort of like the top four or five foot of weed, so the boats don't get all snarled up in the propellers and all the rest of it. But the weeds coming up like four or five foot off the bottom, and it's just finding a, a clear patch. So I've had to be really accurate today, um, and I'll run you through that in a minute. So, I'm starting off with a Garbolino DS14H, which is a 1.25 gram rig. It's a nice little slim pencil, pencil float. This one is uh, 0.12 pound, uh, 0.12 pound? It's not. <laughs> 0.12 mil mainline, which is the Garbolino. I like, I like the Garbolino G G line for all my pole fishing. It's really thin, it's really strong, it's robust, it's pre stretched, it's got a really high braking strain for the diameter, and I've just got total confidence in it. And yeah, it's expensive, it's about 15 quid, 13, 14, 15 quid, depending on where you get it from. But you get 150 meters ball, and I've got all the diameters. So this is um, 0.12, which is about 4.8 pound braking strain. And that's running down to a small bulk, a couple of number sixes, number eights, and a few stops there so I can move things around just above my hook length. And then I've got a hook length. This is 0 0.10, again, Garbolino G line, three number eights, and down to a size 18 Camerson black hook. And I'm fishing it just dead depth, or about an inch or two over depth. That's that rig. The other rig is exactly the same on the same line. It's the same same float but this is a one gram same pattern Garbolino DS14 in one gram and I basically got a strong bulk on this one just uh, one two three four five six six number eights and a couple of small number ten droppers and that's right down to a size um, 
20 camas and black hook as well. I like the camas and blacks, they're really f fine, but quite strong, quite strong. They'll do for roach and skimmers and a few bream. And then from a roach line, which is just top kit, top three, match top three, plus one section. It's got a tiny, very similar style float, little pencil style float. And this is the desk, and it's in 0.4 gram. And I've got four number eight stops just above the bulk. And then another number two at number eights, and two number tens. And this one's on 0.10 uh, main line, running all the way down to a 0.8 hook length. And again, that's on a size, tiny little size 20 Gamma Katsu Black. And that line I'm just basically loose feeding um, a few maggots, a few casters and hemp. The main line, I made up a ground bait. I bought some more ground bait. I've got 50-50 brown crumb and green crumb in there. I've got uh, some dead maggots, dead squats, a few casters and a few grains of uh, sweet corn and it's quite dry but I can, I can still squeeze it into a ball I'll give it a good squeeze and that moulds together in a ball and I put three decent balls in to start with just like so put three of them in and then today I'm using a cupping kit so I've cupped in three of them on my eight metre line. I've left it 20 minutes, went on the roach line, but only had one tiny little roach. And I was catapulting, but it's eight metres, seven, eight metres, that weird length for me on the, on the pole where it's not far enough to get the elastic sort of stretch and it's a bit too close to, it, it goes all over the place. So what I decided to do, because of the patchy weed, Just to basically put a small nugget in, tiny little nugget, every cast when I'm going out via a little po toss pot, little pole pot. So I'm basically just getting a squeezing a tiny ball, size of a walnut, just like that, plopping it in, giving it a good press down so it doesn't pop out. When I get out there, I can just dip the pole under the water. Right. I'll swing you around and I'll show you where I'm fishing. Sun's getting out nice and warm now. Oh, half an hour ago, it dipped really cold. But um, being an amateur, it's the uh, last time I was out. I had my other tripod. And a few other bits and pieces and my GoPro connection to the tripod and this one I've left at home so I've had to fashion something up old school style managed to have another tripod and I've lifted it up like you're doing with a, a GoPro short or a YouTube short and I've just fashioned it on with some elastic bands <laughs> so it's gonna have to make do for today but I'll show you where I am well right, I'm just gonna put a couple of maggots on because I've got no maggots on I should have done that before putting the uh, ground bait in, but I'm just showing you for camera. Or well, I normally do, but as I say, just showing you what I'm feeding. I've sort of got a mark on the pole where to uh, where to drop it because as I say I've got to go in between a patch of weeds. And at the minute I'm finding white maggot is doing the business, but in a minute I'm going to try the worm. So I'm just getting two white maggots, one through the head, one through the tail. It's a bit patchy weed on the inside, so I've got to lift it and swing it out. 
swing it out so I'd miss inside weeds and quickly ship this on and ship out to my eight meters. Just find him a spot. I've got some cow parsley on the other side. Just turning it over, dipping the pot under the water, giving it a bash, getting all that bait out, and then just pulling the pole back into the web, just literally fed. And we're just doing that every cast, trying to build a swim. It's sort of settling just on top of the weeds. I can find a clear spot, the float settles right down, but um, you know when you get a bite like there because the float starts dipping and wobbling and I'm getting a lot of lift bites or it's just sort of like weirdly going left or right, sailing away but not going under. So I know some of it's taken the maggot. It doesn't have to necessarily go under. Just any sort of strange movement on the float that's not normal just striking at not sure if you can see that let's try and focus in a bit if i go a little bit further and swing it out the float just lays flat there's obviously a big clump of weed that's coming up There's plenty of fish here. You all right, I'll move. <laughs> There you go, just pulling it back another inch, it's just let that float settle a little bit better. And there's a little indication on the float there, it didn't go under, it just... I wish I could uh, could have raked it, but because the fish will be on the bottom, the decent fish, the bream and that. It's just making sure your hook bait's on the bottom, not resting on any weed. There's a bite. It's just getting it in the right spot. You have to be exactly in the right spot. Now that float's running away from me and I'm going to strike at this. And that didn't even go under but I could just see it sailing away from me. I'm just very gently lifting the float, nothing more.
Oop, and that one's come off. You all right, go for it, buddy. I'll move out your way. Have a good day. Bye. Cheerio. A nice couple. He made me a cup of coffee first thing this morning when I got down here. He's a fisherman as well. You can see why that came off now. That One of the maggots has doubled up over the point of the hook. Uh, cheers for the coffee. He's telling me of a nice spot he'd be catching a load of fish from, which uh, I've seen on Google Maps. And I know it's of a, like a picnic area. It's, near the pies mill but it's not pies mill it's a bit further up but uh, i'm gonna go and check it out because uh he said you can get to it from the road and uh there's a nice green there and it's all free fishing and i'll check that out so i'm going with two two white maggots again uh this eight meter line i'm using hollow elastic which i've got the lightest one you can get which is the teal. I love this elastic. It's so soft, so stretchy. It's on a puller bung. And uh, the roach line, I've just got a solid, solid four to five elastic on it going through there on the inside line. What I've done is, Rather than going out and buying the ex all the expensive stuff, I always carry a little bottle with me, just an old, well, this is an old conditioner bottle, and that's what it's got in it. Just hair conditioner, one third hair conditioner, and two thirds, mix it with warm water, give it a shake. Before you go, put it inside your top kits. Keep all your elastic lubricated, so it slides back in and out cheapest chips it's exactly the same stuff you buy it in the shops it's just rebranded but it's, it's basically everyone will tell you in the game even all the professionals use it I mean, rather than paying tenner for whatever pressed in this or guru that it's basically hair conditioner as are most things they're just rebranded and put for fishing on it and charged 10 times the price. It's like all these floatants and sinkers, basically all, you know, if you want to sink your line, just use a little bit of diluted washing up liquid. If you want to make your line float, a bit of Vaseline or something like that. Right, we'll get this out again. I'll spin you around. Jesus. This is not going to be my best camera work this week, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's Blue Peter. What I can do with a bit of sticky black plastic and some elastic bands, I'm afraid. Uh, I've just hung on putting a bit of weed, but I'll get my bait in and then I'll bring it back. I'm just going a little bit past my marker because the pole pot's a little bit 
a couple of inches short, so I'm going about four inches past my marker. Dropping that bait in. Let's get this weed off. I mean, I would go back to the car and get the rake, but it's probably going to ruin my swim for an hour or two if I do that. There's a lot of junk on the inside here. You've got to quickly swing your float out, keep it high in the water, and get it straight out. There's a lot of junk on the water at the minute. And it's just a case of finding your mark on the far side and lowering it in. And there we go. Let's see if I can get you a bit better. No, that's rubbish. Let's put this out of the way for a minute. Get that out of the way. There's a bite straight away and it's under. I'm with a tiny little fish this time. I'm going to try worm now. I haven't tried worm all morning. I'll probably give it another couple of these. And then I'm going to be brave and stick another big ball in by the pot, pole pot. Another couple of ounce roach. Right, I'm gonna get a worm, nip his head off. Thread him down. And just out, just like that. You can see it. Well, I'll try this. Get it straight out because we've got a bite and fish quite quickly. I'm gonna not feed this time. and see what the worm does. I did try a little bit further out this morning, 10 metres, so I was going to go to 12 metres, but it seemed to, the further out I went, the weedier it got again. And I mean, a lot of the rivers around here now, they, they need a proper dredge out to get rid of all that weed on the bottom. It's the same in the Wensum and even getting on the air now that they just keep trimming it back every year just to allow the boat traffic through and the holiday makers. But as I say, they only take the top four or five feet off and they, they don't go all the way to the bottom. No, you just use them floating pontoons with like a grass cutter on it and just trim it all down. Mm. 
you give that a little bit of a movement. I'm not afraid to move the pole float and lift and drop it and try and entice something. Oh, there's a bite. Because it's worm, I'm going to let it have it. Uh, <clears throat> missed it. Maybe wait a little bit longer next time. I'm just hoping the worm might bring a odd skimmer or decent perch or something like that. Come off. <clears throat> right, let's just uh, put some more feed in. Keep the snap going in. Okay, where's this breeze coming from? It's supposed to be very light. Southwesterly today. Ooh. Yeah. Naughty bit of breeze. Just trying to lower just gently lower my pole float down in a spot where the I know there's a bit of a clear bit in the weeds if I swing it out or swing it to the side it catches up but uh, I've got about a, sort of like a dustbin lid size clear bit Well, old Bretsky was here all day yesterday, he didn't have a fish. I don't know what he was doing though. <laughs> he had a little rod just down the edge with a bit of a warm swivel on it and a couple of maggots. But no, it was neither float fishing, neither ledger. But it's quite clear and you can see like three or four foot down and I've had a couple of goes on the five or 
top three plus one and nothing and I just don't think they're going to come in this close while it's this clear. get that bit of grass or whatever it was off the float. But definitely a lot slower response on the worm at the minute. Right, that's enough for me for that one. I'm gonna bring this in. I'll feed again and then I'm going to put back on white maggot, double white maggot. thing about the pole pot is you've got to be careful of your line going round it. Because if you get a decent fish, you're going to lose the rig. Right, I'll take this worm off. I'm going to go two white maggots this time. I'm going to hook them both through the tail. And I'm going to feed as well. I'm squeezing the balls still quite tight, even though it's just a tiny little sort of walnut size. I'm pressing it in and I want it to get to the bottom. Literally put my pole flow right on top of my feed, and there we go straight away. To keep feeding my inside line. It's supposed to get out quite warm today, about 20 degrees or so, 19, 20, something like that.
but not till around 12 o'clock-ish. I say I was going to rake a, there's a bike there, I was going to rake a swim out this morning but there's two or three boats around me and they've gone now but there's people on them and I don't want to start crashing and raking at six, half six in the morning, whatever it was. It's being a bit respectful of the people sleeping on the boat. I wasn't expecting this breeze. I think what I'm going to do is well, I'm going to bring this back and put one number eight on it. There's a bike there. I'm going to hit that. It didn't go under, but it was sailing away. That's good enough for me. That's good enough for me. Oh, and a bike, big pike's just come up. He's there, look. Little Jack Pike, about two or three pounds, followed it in. And a little roach, a couple of ounces, three ounces. We'll keep plugging away. It's cold. There's boat over there this morning they were pike fishing and uh, he said they had about 10 little jacks out yesterday biggest one about six to eight and the guy come down this morning lure fishing for pike and that so there's plenty of pike in here so I might give it a go myself tomorrow They were float fishing over there, and uh, I was thinking with this uh, with this weed, you might be better off ledgering. I think ledgering a dead bait, a bit of mackerel or sardine or. Well, there you go. Might have to just shorten this elastic a touch because it's a new one in there and I'm stretching a little bit. Right. Let's sort this out. Hello, youngun. Right, I'm going to put a number eight on. Just to dip that float right down. I'm going to put it as a telltale shot and just dip it under the float so that's it all right let's get some more scram in
Right, that's not for you, matey. Guide this between the bloody weeds. Just give the pole a little tap just to release that ball. I've got loads of crap on my line. It's like loads of floating weed junk in front of me, look at it. Ouch. 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 Don't do that. That's gone right through and out. <laughs> uh, okay. Pair of pliers job on this one. I did bring my, because I came down here yesterday just to have a look after work and I could see it, well, like it always is down here. Um, it's very little flow, very little flow. So I did bring my old school, which I've not used for years. I used to use it on the Boston and Lincolnshire fens and drains and stuff and uh, my Silstar. Power wind nine foot six picker rod, which would be ideal for here. It was the first actually sort of ledger rod, feeder rod I ever bought, but it's absolutely fantastic. It came out at the same time as a Shakespeare wand, and I've used it for everything. I've used it on the River Witham from Bream, I used it on the River Trent when I moved to Nottingham. Obviously stepped up to bigger rods, but I've had everything on it. Ten pound bream. We used it in the winter with Shallow Brook and Cobble Lake of feeder fishing. I've had this carp up to four or five pound on it. It, it might be a, it might be a little one rod, but my God, it's, it's got some power to it. I tell you, I had a sixty pound haul of chub up to like five or six pound on it. I'm getting the bites, but I think if it's on a little bit of weed or it's holding it up, I don't want to say it's indestructible. Just putting that number eight shot on has made a world of difference, and uh, I think as well, just the way that. The floats sort of like when I'm striking. Um, that's come off. I think I've just been out by a jackpot by the look of it. Because that elastic twanged out. Yeah. I've just been out by a jack. Yeah, I think the fish are shallow. Or going down for the bait and coming straight back up because the float is getting a lot of lift bites. Alright, I'll just literally put another hook on. I've just gone out, I've got a roach. And again, I've got jack piped. I just literally just let go. Oh, it's just let go. I was lucky at that time. He's bleeding. I'm going to put this one back. He's been had look. Is it games? little two pound or something like that tiny little jack keeps coming up just from like five meters and snaffling them in on the way in so. yeah get him back he's bleeding he's been bitting the tail You gotta come pike in, bring a little whip first and get a few tiny little roach, I think. 
see the live bait roach. I think as well, just um, putting that hook on, I'm, it's obviously shortened the rig about an inch or two, or about an inch, an inch and a half. This float's just settling a little bit better. But I'm going to pick the other rig up yet, cause, um, in a minute, because I haven't used that yet. In fact, what I'm going to do actually, I'm going to bring this in. I said I was going to do it. I'm going to pick up my pole pot, cupping kit. I'm going to cup in another ball. It's probably been about an hour. And here's one I made earlier. Blue Peter Styley today. Right, I'll quickly swing you around for this one. You always make your ground bait ball and that first. Straight onto your section four. Keep that low. Keep your two pole rollers. Watch it come off the back of your pole roller so you don't get any dip or top of your pole swinging upwards. You need to get it balanced. Make sure they're in the right spaces. And then it's just slide them out. There you go. it between this floating junk a little bit of a feathery thing on the bulk by the look of it I think what I'm going to do as well after this uh, bring this one in I'm going to try my strung out rig just to see if it's I think they're taking on the drop and maybe you might just settle on top of the weeds a little bit more and there's a bite straight away. Oh, that's come off because that was resting on a bit of weed there. And there's a bite as well. There's obviously a lot of fish here. a lot of fish, you've got to keep a lot of bait going in. Little enough to know. And I'll just gung ho it and pile it in. Just feed to the response. So we've had very few bites where the float had gone under today and I think that's due to the strangly weed coming off the bottom. The, taking a maggot and, as I say, coming up, up with it or they're not going down into the weeds to take the float under the going left or right or up. that bite just dipped ever so slightly and again I'm just going to move the float ever so slightly just to lift that maggot a touch I think that's got it. 
Yeah, I'll do for me. Go on. I'm going to lift at it. Oh, it's bumped it. I felt it. Small fish. See, that's perfect, that way I've let that settle now. See, that's how the float should be settling every time. Pretty much flush. Okay, I was going to try a strong out rig, but I thought I'll quickly just pick up the inside rig, a little roach rig. Top three plus one. I've been feeding it for an hour or so now. I've got a couple of nice rows. But what I've done is, I've literally spread all the shot out throughout the whole depth of the ring. So I've got two number eights, well, three, three lots of two number eights, a number eight, a number eight, a number ten. All just strung out. Feeding a little pinch of maggots, casters, and hemp. I'm flicking this over. I'm laying the rig out, and stretching out as far as I can. Just literally getting what, two, four, about eight of each. Nice dice. <coughs> Go in the first time round, it was bolted down, but I thought, oh, I'll just try the strong out rig and it's working a lot better. Give it a lot more natural fall. Still getting all the way to the bottom before getting a bite. six bits of each, that's what I'm feeding. And if the ropes are going to be this big here, then I don't see the point of going much further out. Best ropes of the day. Change the hook after that last fish because it strangely sort of like snapped up the bend. Shank was all right, but I think it's probably just been on the rig that long. So um, 
I just changed over. It's got a nice perch. new favourite sort of hook for roach and perch and bits and pieces, the Camazon B530 long shank blue, they're really strong, it's fine carbon wire but it's really, they're really strong and it's a long shank and they've got quite a nice gape on them, and just for caster fishing and maggots and that, and they're brilliant hooks, absolutely brilliant. What I'm going to do is, because obviously put a new hook on, shorten the rig by an inch or so. Not giving me a lot of uh, room to swing it out now, so I'm just going to put the section 5 on and just drop it because I think they're just a little bit further out, right at the end of my reach. Literally hold section five. See if that make any difference. There are a lot better stamps here, so I'll give it five, ten minutes, and that's made a massive difference straight away. Look what the hell is this? Okay. That number five elastic is right out. Okay. Is this a pipe? Um, is it three? It is a three. Bloody hell. That's so in close as well. <laughs> it's a good green. I've been feeding me eight meter line with ground bait. And they're right under your bloody. Ooh. This will bring guys. Yeah, big bream. I've been feeding my eight meter line all morning with ground bait and stuff for nothing. I've just popped it down short. I know. <laughs> just got on my roach line at five meters. It's unbelievable, isn't it?
What's going on with this? All over the place today. <sighs> Shit the bed. Well, we'll try that again. Yeah, strange. Oh, it's slimed to hell. Slimed. Single maggot as well. Single white maggot. Well, that number five uh, solid did the business there. And that was on the strong outrig as well. Couldn't make it up. We'll see how this is. If it's gone a bit funny now. Oh no, it hasn't gone funny. It seems to have moved in. In straight away. Nice roach. I think just putting that extra two inches on has all made all the difference. And then just shipping it out an extra sort of like six inches made a massive difference. <coughs> well, I'll give it another couple of fish here. I'll swing you around and then uh, I'll go back on the original eight metre line and you never know, they might have settled out there. Just swinging it out, I'll get switch around. Right. I'm sort of halfway down the section five. I'm just what two, four, six, eight casters, eight maggots. Couple of bits of hemp. I have to get this swung out because that's better. I just want to sort of lay it up against the shelf. That's where I want it, that's where I want it. I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to introduce any ground bait because... I don't want to spook them off. They've come in without it, so I'm not going to put any in now. We just spent another sort of 65, 65 quid at um, AA Bates online last week and uh, I've got another 20 kilo bag of brown crumb five kilo of green crumb, five kilo of hemp, a couple of, two or three kilos of crushed hemp and 
I've got four great big black buckets to spread it out and I've put in some uh, coriander. What about a kilo of coriander? Well, not, no, not a kilo, sorry. About 300 grams of ground coriander. Okay, I'm just gonna let that settle now. One more, oh, we've got all them bubbles coming up there, look. Tons of bubbles. Load of uh, desiccated coconut ground and down. And um, I don't really go commercial fishing anymore. And I load of expander pellets, four and six mil of ringers and uh, the pro or the swim stim ones. I put them in the grinder and whizzed all them down into a powder, put all them in. Some dry crushed hemp. I oh, don't believe this. I thought that was on the bottom then. Another bream. Unreal. Single white maggot. Oh shit. That wasn't a bream. That wasn't a bream. I think that's just been out by a big pike. A big pike. Yeah. It was a bream. Now it's a pike pike bream. Yes. Uh, that was a bream. Bloody bloody great bloody great pike took it. Oh, that's that rig fucked. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just shot off down there, just absolutely smashed my rig to bits. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 I, don't, uh, I was down here about three weeks ago. Uh, we had a cottage around the corner. I yeah. fished down the end there. Uh, as, as I pulled the roach, uh, I the roach. There's plenty of little jackies this morning coming up for the roach, yeah. but um, yeah, well, that wasn't, uh, that must have been about <laughs> over £10 or yeah. £10 yeah, we, pike. That took, it took the roach I had on. Yeah. Um, and it was it was a way, but obviously it just it, you had to let go of the fish in the end because yeah could, yeah you know, uh, you know the, the bream are quite close. I was talking to a guy at Roxham a couple of weeks ago, and he had like a thirty pound pike, and he said, yeah, he uses like one pound, one and a half pound skimmer bream. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. But the bream are literally yeah. Literally, they're about, not even on end of us. Still back there. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And <laughs> I've been all morning, I've been feeding balls of ground bait and out at eight, nine metres. <laughs> and literally, and the, uh, I haven't fed any ground bait down there, just loose feeding. Crazy, yeah. Oh well. No <laughs> we obviously want to be there for a reason, but. Yeah. Uh, so. Early this morning. What time did you get? I got here first light and then five, it? Like that. Yeah. 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 But it takes me about, it takes me now to set all this crap up. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was awake and uh, I was I thought, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get out in a minute. Um, <laughs> you know what, I'll leave it in a while like that. But you have to get in quick because uh, Yeah, because I came down that because I haven't been here for about a year or so. Yeah. And last time I did came down, I did really well on the bream yeah. um, pole fishing as well. But I got down here just to see after work yesterday, about half four-ish. Yeah. And uh, there, yeah, you couldn't get a spot really. No, yeah. no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's why I noticed uh, yesterday, it was, in fact, it wasn't as crowded as it, as it can be. Yeah. You know, at least you've got, you've got a gas. Uh, normally I'll fish down here. Right yeah. It's not a it's not a peg to tie up to. Um, oh, right, so yeah. Tend to stay one away. Yeah, because yeah, I, I met Bretsky yesterday when Brett's fishing, he was down here. Yeah. And uh, he was saying, yes, yeah, this boat just came in and it's just wiped two people out. We didn't even right. stop, just sort of like ploughed through the line. Here as well, yeah. 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 Like these rod went in and everything. I was like, well, it's, yeah. that's a bit inconsiderate because. 
there's no signs anywhere to say anglers got to give way because it's all free along here. It's not. Yeah. 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 But sometimes. It's a bit of common courtesy, isn't it? It is yeah. Really, yeah. Um, just, do you know what? When I was fishing up the edge, there wasn't a boat along here, <coughs> and they moored up right where I thought it was fishing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Thought, well, why'd you do that? Yeah, yeah. You know. Somebody was having a go at me the other week. I was like down at uh, um, opposite Serling, Serlingham Ferry on uh, Posick, yeah. and that bit there. There's obviously the green, <clears throat> but they've got three more in. And uh, but the bit where the ferry is, that little bit right as you go down the lane, yep. you can't. They're not allowed them all there because it's an old public worry. Oh, right. it's, it was. It was wanted to moor up. And I said no, you can't moor up here, mate. It says it's. There's no more in here. This is a private private land. It's, a, it's an old worry. So the moorings to the right on the green bit there, and he was like, oh, I want them, I want them all here. I said, well, you can't moor here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not move, I'm not moving. <clears throat> uh, it was a couple of fellas here. They were fishing. There's only three small faces here. But the fellow wanted them all up, and he couldn't move them, and they were not happy. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... Oh, right, yeah, um, okay. Because I come from uh, New South End, the LERC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Ouch. I do like the end, from the Barton Broad. Oh, but Barton Broad, yeah? Yeah, I do like Barton Broad. All the broads are good in the winter. Yeah. Especially if you can moor up out of the way of anybody. Because uh, there's not a lot of mooring there, you can find them. Like, Barton Broad, is that? South Walsh from Broad, isn't it? That's what some people call it. Yeah. yeah. Come in a bit. What's that? I, think I, I said I think I'll come in a bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, well, last, last time... It I took a little while this morning to find a spot that's clear, because they come down and they don't it doesn't get sort of dredged they just come and trim it and they just just trim like the top four yeah. foot of weed to stop all the holiday boats and that the yeah. propellers and all the rest of it the filter is not getting caught up but the weeds you know three four foot off the bottom you have to have a good plumb about i found a couple of little spots i can get to the bottom without being yeah. hung up on weed Uh, than a Roxham. Roxham, it tends to be, uh, I've seen where the trim is. Yeah. There is so much. Oh, Roxham Broad is phenomenal, yeah. That's what I, I've got. I did come down last night, but I just couldn't get a spot anywhere. Oh, I've got I've got a rake in the bottom, double-headed rake. Oh, right. But uh, yeah. I was going to rake it out. but. Yeah. Anyway, good luck. Good. Are you on the feeder or? Yeah, yeah, I just, I just put a little finger out. Um, do you know I've got a pole? Um, yeah, a whip will do. Sorry? A little whip or a pole. Yeah, yeah. I've got a phobia against it. <laughs> <laughs> are you? I love it. I do like it. Once I get into it, it's great. Um, I should do it more often. Uh, I just need to set it all up properly. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's getting elasticated properly. And yeah. Yeah. No, but they're nice. They're some nice breed. They all tend to, the breed tend to be about the same size down here. Yeah, they are decent ones. Yeah. I mean, last year, I, I, I can't remember what time of year it was. About, about this time. I had about 20 of them out in the morning on the pole. Really? Yeah. All good stamp as well. All around the five, six pound mark. Yeah. 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 Because I've been getting a few down at Posick and on the air and that, but they're only two and a half, three pounders. So yeah. Not, not, not nothing like that was a great no. big old black thing. Yeah, yeah, I think they're great when when, when they're size, lovely fish. 
I was fishing um, a lake just up at, uh, near North Borsham. Um, I was on a site there, but it was just so easy. You got boring. I quit all that in lockdown, the, the, that first lockdown, and yeah. I haven't been to commercial since. No. I got oh. back out on the rivers. I mean, that's where I was. I was brought up and bred on the rivers and yeah, yeah. Um, the River Trent and the River Witham and the Welland and yeah. the Boston and Lincolnshire yeah. fens and drains and uh, yeah, I just much prefer rivers to yeah. all that com commercial carp crap. Yeah, well, when I was younger, a lot of uh, the club that I belonged to, we used, that's all they ever used to fish. We never had to have waters, it was just fish rivers. Yeah, yeah, that's all we used to do every week. Which was really good, really nice. Anyway, please, hurry up. Alright, cheers. Well, the better stamp are definitely down in the day there, because out there I was just catching them all day long. Yeah, and I've come here and... There's so much better stamp down. Yeah. Alright. Um, that's a decent roach, <coughs> pure roach as well. This one, as I say, I've just put another rig on and uh, straight back under. Let's have a quick plumb up. And another stunning roach. So I was, was a gas into that guy. But um, yeah, I just uh, that rig just got smashed to bits completely. Um, it was a decent bream as well, about three, four pound. And I just saw a great big torpedo come up and take it, and it was off down the river. Gonna put another inch on there. Right. As the old adage goes, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, what have we got on here? So I just picked out the first rig that looked ideal. We've got a 4 by 16 Colmic float. Again, 0 0.10 Garbolino mainline G-Force. And that's running straight through to size 18 B520. I'm just sticking with single maggot because it seems to be working. Single white maggot. Right, I'll swing you around. I'm literally laying this in now because quite a very light rig. It's 24 by 16. But I might just step up the feed slightly if there's bream in the down there because it ain't going to take long for them to woof it all through oh. i'm going to have one more fish here then i'm going to go out and put another ball in on my eight meter line or i might put two or two or three balls in There's no shot on this rig, so 
I'm just adding shot as I go. There's only four with 16s. I'm going back for a strong outrig as well. We'll take another little shot, number 10, I think. <clears throat> But I think today, the lighter the rig, the better. I mean, because there's very little flow here. Nice, hairy, fairy, strung out rig. You know, that's not too PC. <laughs> hairy, fairy. What? Hairy, fairy. Not a hairy, fairy. Mate, dipping the tip under, just dragged it because I've got quite a short line on there. chewed that maggot I might just bring this back to where I was originally and just fish it halfway down section 5 they might, yeah. I think I've just gone a bit past them <laughs> any little but Try a double red and see if that does anything. Okay. Let's sort this rig out. put a number eight stock just underneath the float just to these rubbers aren't very tight actually they're not very tight okay. oh shit the bed man Bloody rubbers are way too loose, way too loose. What the hell to put these on for? I don't know. Oh, that's going to have to go there. Try again. I'm going to have one more fish. And I'm going to ball it in. Two or three balls on the eight metre line. And there's a bite straight away.
That's a better fish. Another decent roach. It's been good and it's been lucky, but you can't be lucky all the time. Not blowing my own trumpet or anything. <laughs> Oh, I am, but sometimes you've got to blow your own trumpet if you can. Not being rude. All right, let's get a few balls in on the long line. I'll have a look at the time. Give that 25 minutes to settle, and then I'll go back on that. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely, maybe. Quickly whiz my balls out. I'm sort of varying these. I'm going to put one ball really tightly squeezed, so go straight to the bottom. One sort of medium, which is this one, we'll sort of hopefully break up on the way down. And then the last one I'm going to do really light, just to sort of create a cloud and hopefully draw some fish into the area. So I've got a nice sort of like funnel of bait from top to bottom going through the water, and they can come in from all angles and follow the column down to the bottom where the bait's on the bottom. <laughs> this one's going to do really loose, as loose as I can. I don't mind if it breaks up a little bit. Because as I say, I want to make a nice cloud on the surface and have it falling all the way through the swim, all the, all the way to the bottom. There's plenty of particles in there. Dead maggots, dead squats, casters, crushed hemp. I've got no two mils today, a bit of sweet corn. You can see that just clouding up on the surface. The main ball's gonna go down and be breaking up on its way down. All right, I'll look at the time, give that 25 minutes and then... All right, what's the time? I'm going to have to stop this to find out the time. In fact... 10 o'clock. All right, let's go back in on the... the whip, uh, five metre line. Well, I'm going to just stick with a single white maggot. It seems to be pulling out all the better stamped fish for whatever reason.
you know, if there's a, any novices or people just getting into fishing and sort of watching my videos, I mean, bullet points that I'd sort of like get right is plumb the depth, make sure you're on the bottom, you're just touching the bottom or just slightly over. And if you've got a sort of natural shelf, look for <clears throat> either the bottom of the shelf or <clears throat> halfway up the shelf where it's not on a nice slope. Try and fish, fish as light as you can and feed and always go for little and often, little and often. And try and build it up from there and build, build your peg. Just accuracy as well, you know, getting, make sure your bait's going in the same place all the time, you're not throwing it or catapulting it here, there and everywhere. And you know, and then even if you're new to fishing, you just try and have two places on the go because it's very rarely you, one one peg or one one spot is going to fish all day long <clears throat> you can have quiet spells the fish will come in and out and come up in the water they'll drop down or come close or back off go upstream downstream as the tides you so you've got to keep in contact and if you have two or three swims going have them all ticking over with bait nicely you can when one goes slow you can switch between your lines and nothing this time so I'm going to try a little bit further out oh no ok that's a bream again or something big fish or something. oh snagged on something is it I don't know. let's let it go There's definitely a fish there, but it's caught on something. Right. If, if this happens, keep your pole low and just grab your elastic and inch your elastic in. Just keep an inch in your elastic in. Keep it away from your eyes. If you have a pole in the air it's like last time, it's gonna keep it low to the water. Cause there we go, it's come through. And it's a bit of a branch. Because if it just whizzed by, you don't want it poking your eye out. The bristle of the float going through your hand, as I saw last year at Cobble Acre. Went straight through the wire stem, just went straight through this guy's hand. He came up to me and asked me to pull it out of a pair of pliers. Always put a slight angle on it, don't pull it directly back towards you. Because if it just ping loose, the last thing you want is, as I say, a pole bristle going in your face. the line I'm going to try and bully these fish a little bit just because I know there's pike about and I want to get them up to the surface and out And an absolutely fantastic quality roach. Let's 
going on here? Come on, he's bony bit. There you go. Stone roach. Pure roach. So, this uh, line seems to be getting better and better. I've just gone back to my usual way of feeding. I've been putting a few um, dead maggots through as well. Mainly because I've got more dead some live maggots, but um, just in case there are any bream down there, not just a But they're definitely sort of closer in. The further I go out, the less I bites I get. Another fantastic roach. And as I say, why go out eight, nine metres when you can catch them right here? But this number five elastic is absolutely working the dream. It's uh, another fantastic roach. I've just got it really lightly set the elastic so it just slides back in. Another absolutely cracking roach. I mean, who could sit here all day long and not catch a fish? You need to come and get some lessons, boy. Or not have a hook on. <laughs> okay, guys, it's coming up to 12 o'clock. Uh, I tried out the 8 metre line but you're just getting little bits on there and it's finicky and it's just not working but the 5 metre line has it's just got stronger and stronger and stronger all day long I'm just catching a fish a chuck and some really good roach and just switching it up between cast and corn really uh, when it goes quiet I'm putting a bit of corn on sitting and waiting for a bite when I'm still feeding regularly and then um, when the fish return again back on the cast and it's just a fish a chuck really had a little bit of pike trouble, but not lost any tackle this time. But uh, now nah, you're all right. That's fine. <laughs> you're doing better than me, I'm sure. <laughs> so we're probably going to give it another 20 minutes. 20 minutes, half an hour at the most, and running out of bait again. I mean, I've gone through a. And this weed sort of seems to be settling where I am. Um, I've gone through a good pint and a half of hemp, nearly a pint of mag uh, casters, and about half a pint of maggots. So I've, I've really cut back on the maggots. Just I'm only putting the maggots in when it goes quiet, just to sort of spark the peg into action again and try and bring a few fish back in. But we're in again, it's just a fish are chucking, they're right under right under the float and I'm just lifting now. I'm just I'm just lifting up. They're all roach, they're all roach and all beautiful roach. I've had a few days in, in between but single casters, definitely the best bait. And then sweet corn is getting some of the Huge donkey roach, the old dog roach. They say I'm sticking to caster. And I've just gone back to the way I started really with um, 
just very little and often. Very little, very often. Again with a few grains of corn scattered in and around. I'll switch you around. There's a lot of weed where I am, there's nowhere else, which just seems to settle where I am. So just sort of laying it in. Plenty of hemp, I've stepped up the hemp. Casters, one or two grains of corn. There's a lot of people here now. A few people fishing. I've not seen them catch anything. But, uh, plenty of people picnicking and paddle boarding and a few boats mooring up now. I'll probably give it 20 minutes, we'll pull this and uh, see what we got. A good, he a good net of fish. I reckon I've had about 100 fish, probably more. And then again. And another nice roach. I think that number elastic, number five elastic, solid elastic, is just absolutely perfect for this stamp of fish. I'm gonna cope with that bream as well. Right, I've not seen one person down here on the float. They're all sat there like dummies on a feeder, staring at a motionless tip all day long. But hey ho, horses for courses, I suppose. I was just talking to a guy. Um, He's coming down thinking of fishing it and I said he was thinking about going on the feeder. I said the problem with the feeder here is unless you rake a another nice decent roach. Unless you rake yourself out a little swim and clear a spot or have a chuck out with just a bomb on and find a tiny little clear patch, you could be chucking in a great big pile of weed or well, you're more than likely 90 percent of the time going to chuck into a pile of weed um so you're wasting your time you're better off on a float and like have a good plumb around and find patches of clear spots and uh, that's your best way forward because if you just toss a feeder out you're 95 percent chance of just landing in weeds basically um, Oh, I can't even sit down. I think I've just been piked again. Yeah, it's just gone really heavy. Yeah, I've been piked and he's let go. Or oh, I've been bit, one of the two. I've been bit through. Yeah, hook's gone. Hi guys, sorry about this. I've just got to hold my GoPro because I've left all my camera attachments at home. The phone battery's died, so I've just taken that back to the car and uh, that's on charge. So I'm just holding my GoPro at the minute. <clears throat> so I've just, I've started to introduce, uh, introducing a couple of grains of sweet corn on my close five metre line. I had some really nice roads. And I didn't feel that the uh, balling in is working out there on the 8 metre line, so I'm loose feeding on the 8 metre line now through my pole pot. And I've been introducing sweet corn and just tapping it for a bit of ground bait on top just to stop it bouncing out. But I've had three absolutely cracking roach now. Uh, I mean, that's the smallest one of the three. But um, yeah, the sweet corn's working at the minute again, doing the business getting this really big fat quality roach so I'm just sort of like alternating catching half a dozen fish on each one and 
I say I've started introduce a sweet corn on both lines now, loose feeding it, um, and it's working. Right, let's get this back. Okay, guys, we've got to hold my GoPro because I've got no attachment for it. Because me and a twat, I've left them all at home. So, um, what, I've, what I did as well, I've moved the bulk up a good sort of eight, ten inches, and I've moved the dropper shot right up to the top of the hook link, and the float is just settling perfectly every time now. I think that uh, the bulk was too close to the bottom. It's either been held up on weed and wasn't settling, but just moving that bolt shot a good, a, up a good 10 inches and moving all the bottom shot up as well to the top of the hook link, the float is just sitting so much better, 100% better. I say I've got a single grain and a sweet corn on, and it's taking a little bit longer for a bite, but uh, I'm potting in about 8 to 10 balls, uh, 8 to 10 grains of sweet corn and just plugging it with a little bit of ground bait to stop them bouncing out on the way out. Still got, you know, a bit of caster and dead maggots through the ground bait. And there's a bite there. I'm just waiting for it to go. And wait and strike. Oh, I missed that one. That's because I'm holding the pole on my right hand and <laughs> the camera in my left hand. She's a bit poshy, bit poshy dress for a Sunday stroll, isn't she? High heels and a frock on. There's a bit of candy to my right. And there's the float. And I can't, I'm going to have to put this uh, GoPro down because I'm trying to strike with my knee and it's not working. I probably could if it was a shorter line, but I'm going to wait till that. And we're in this time. And again, that jada 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 says it's a good quality roach. Well, I'm going to have to put you down. Between the legs. Come off. Right, so you're gonna have to go away until I catch a fish. How about that for a quality roach? That's not the biggest one today, but they're all beautiful stamp. Absolutely scaled perfect. Single caster. Let's get <laughs> straight in the net. <clears throat> right, I'm gonna carry on for another 10 15 minutes and then uh, I'm done. I'm nearly out of casters, so let's just spin you around. It's slowing down a little bit. Uh, I'm all over the place today for my tripod because I haven't got my proper one. Right, guys, I'm all done. Well, I'm not going to weigh them, I'm not going to be taking about the net, but there's probably about 40 pounds in there. Maybe more. I don't know if you can see this, camera's a bit rubbish. That's the biggest one of the day. A nice bream about five pounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this way. <laughs> right, we'll get you straight back. Okay guys, we're all back in the car. We're all done. Apologise if the pictures weren't too brilliant at the end there, but um, 
There's that many people there. They all wanted to come around and have a look at all the net of fish. And there's loads of kids, families, and everyone asking you questions and where were you fishing and how are you fishing and this, that, and the other. And uh, yeah, I was a little bit pressured. So the best thing I thought I'd do is just getting back as quickly as possible. But uh, yeah, fantastic, fantastic days fishing. I'm uh, really, really surprised at the stamp and the quality of the roach there. I wasn't expecting that. They're all about 12 ounces to a pound, some over a pound, pound and a quarter. And uh, just one big bream, about five pound. But I did count, well, I estimate between 130 and 150 fish. I stopped counting when I got to 100. 99% roach, a couple of days, one perch, one bream. Um, everything seemed to work. Like I say I started on the eight meter line. It was quite quiet and just nicked a few fish here and there off of that line and I fed my five metre line for an hour and a half, two hours. And as soon as I went on that, the stamp of fish were three times as good. So I had a bit of a rethink, um, swapped my sort of like feeding on my eight metre line and just went for loose feed with a captive for a bit of uh, ground bait over the top. I did initially put another two balls in, but it seemed to spook them a bit. Um, then they sort of like let loose fed casters and sweet corn over the top of it and a bit of hemp and just say capped it with a bit of ground bait just to stop it bouncing out. And that did did make a change and got a few fish, but as I say again, there was only like a couple of ounces, two, three ounces, so there's absolutely no point of going out to eight, nine meters when you're catching far better stamped fish a lot quicker and short. So I just did that for the rest of the day, just stayed on my five meter line and just fed plenty of hemp, got through over a pint of hemp and a pint of casters. I cut the maggots out after the first half an hour <clears throat> and then started introducing sweet corn and as I say when things went quiet I put a bit of corn on and just sat, sat and wait for a better quality fish but I was still sort of like feeding it and just plugged my way through the day like that. <clears throat> yeah, fantastic day's fishing. So uh, I can't believe Brett sat there all day long and didn't catch anything. You need to come fishing with me, mate. <laughs> I'll show you a thing or two. But uh, yeah, everyone was just asking me questions. And as I was saying in the video, it's all about um, make sure you've got the right depth, to make sure you're plumbed up, make sure you're accurate with the bait, you're not spraying your bait here, there and everywhere, left, right and centre. Um, little and often, literally, or eight, eight bits of hemp, eight bits of caster initially a few maggots and just did that throughout the day. Um, <clears throat> tried stepping up but it made it go a bit funny and the bites were really fast lightning bites so just went back to having a little and often um, every single chucking and it, yeah paid off. Hope you enjoyed the video guys as I say <clears throat> apologies if the uh, video quality is not quite up to it today because I was a total idiot. I didn't check my uh, last time I, I was out with my, my carry all my green, my green carry all on the beach. All my tripod stuffs in there, and the camera attachments were in there. So uh, I had to do a bit of a blue Peter styley today and uh, just lash it on with a bit of a uh, few elastic bands. Anyway, tight lines, guys. All the best, and I'll see you again in another video. Cheerio.